the second planet from Kerbal, incorrectly regarded by many as the final boss of Kerbal's space program. The true holder of that prestigious title is, of course, the Sun. Last time, I explored the Kerbin system, killed Jeb, Val, and made some very questionable designs. The now the game has decided to reward me by sending me to hell. Not to worry though, I'm sure it won't take me too long to design a craft that works and get back from the surface. But first, satellites. No, 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 no! Clearly, the mission to EVE was going to be a long and difficult road. Staging fixed, I was able to get the transfer planet to orbit and begin using the maneuver tool. What I didn't realize is that I needed a level three tracking station to unlock that feature. I felt like quite the idiot. Oh well, I'm sure this will help with communications, or it would had I remembered to place a relay antenna on it. On the bright side, I found myself with some very lucrative contracts. So I set off to make my first moon base. My imagination in naming this craft, as always, is excellent. Setting the base down with a view, I was certain that many Kerbal tourists would want to visit, once again overestimating stock contracts. To this day, Moonbase 1 lays abandoned. Enticed by the payout of 150,000 funds, I didn't even think to check how much the vessel would cost. This was a mistake, as after setting the glorified shack on the surface of the moon, I realized my money had moved by a minuscule amount. So anyway, I went back to the moon, my imaginativity here really reaching new heights. Farside landing achieved, ridiculous number of breaking ground parts placed, science spam initiate. With the mission complete, I was able to get some funds, but still not the payout I was hoping for. Clearly, my best course of action would be to go to Eve, the old fashioned way. After some time, I got myself a maneuver that could take me to the planet, and with that, I needed to pick some sacrifices. Looking thrilled with their situation, Sansta, Bob, and Bill were launched to Eve. Upon reaching orbit, it was clear my measurements were quite wrong, so for the next 32 days, they were going to have to wait in Kerbin orbit. Great for me, as I could pick up an Eve satellite contract and launch it in the same window. Not so brilliant for the Kerbal's bone density. I would like to say I get better at timing my launches, yeah, I really would like to be able to say that. EVE satellite in orbit, now to spin. One burn later, and the three Kerbals and Probe were interplanetary. The reaction of all Kerbal kind was legendary. Not having to worry about trivial things such as food or oxygen, I could quite comfortably sit back, put my feet up and relax, knowing that nothing could possibly interfere with the EVE encounter. And just like that, the spacecraft were at EVE. Probe orbit achieved, contract completed, EVE scanned. Now to attempt the first interplanetary landing. On potato. With adequate delta Vs, I was able to plot an encounter with the small moon. And on the way, science. Get out to reset the experiment. And then, science. Get out to reset the experiment. And then, you guessed it, science. And before long, suddenly, potato. Landing on potato is extremely dull. Moving at incredible speeds of 18 meters per second in orbit, anything here would take a very long time. So I helped that along a bit by pointing directly to the moon and burn. This is, uh, your captain speaking. The, uh, local time is, uh, approximately, uh, 6.42. Uh, the weather outside is, uh, clear and dry on account of, uh, there being absolutely no atmosphere. Before landing a quick note, this craft was never meant to land. It has no landing gear. Legs, wheels, grips, hand wavium anti-gravity device, you name it, to help with a soft touchdown. Instead, the engine bell will be the gear. I'm sure nothing bad can come of landing on our only way home. Thank you, uh, for flying with, uh, EasyJet. Remember, moon samples are, uh, not included in the price. The spacecraft, never having to deal with such speed, was in for one hell of a descent. Oh, okay. It landed. <laughs> 
Had I equipped the craft with a strong enough antenna, I'm sure everyone back on Kerbin would have been thrilled. Flag down, science grabbed, and no accidental sneezes to orbit, the Kerbals made their way back home. Mission completed, potato flagged, into mission control to see what's next. Ah, of course, it's rendezvous. Wait a minute, I did that last video. Never again. The contract does, however, want me to rendezvous around Eve. Why couldn't it have given me that when I already had a craft in orbit that was capable of doing so? Oh yes, because stock career is fun. Once again, a reasonable amount of science was earned from the trip, and now I had nearly unlocked all nodes that a level 2 R&D could provide. It appears I would need to upgrade, but in order to do so, I would need a big injection of money. This looks promising. Fix a rover on the surface of the moon. How hard can that be? It turns out, very. Utterly defeated, Kraken still angry, the Kerbals were sent home. Oh, that's gonna be such a waste of 400,000 Kerbucks. To make up for the funding lost on failing building the rover, the new base was sent to Minmus. Once again, the base name is on point. By mistake, I launched this with Ambry and Erwig on board. I can say, without any worry, I definitely will not forget about those two. Another satellite launched in the Kerbin system for some short change, and Chadkal rescued from Kerbin orbit, totally not for future nefarious purposes, and the next Eve transfer window had arrived. At least my last trip there had given me enough money to unlock the manoeuvre tool. And this time, I was going with the intent of landing. Oh yeah, and also performing that rendezvous the game so desperately wants me to do. Two new missions designed, Torx 2 and Eve Cop were launched. With the acquisition of nuclear engines, the efficiency of the new Tor vessel was greatly improved, and the vehicle to send Chadkal, Klausi, and Bob to Eve looked marginally better than the previous Ariane Delta IV bastardization. With the two craft at Eve, it was time to have them get real personal, meet, and yeah, just meet up, nothing more to see here. One quick spacewalk and the next EVE exploration contract was completed. And due to my incredible foresight, and absolutely not because this was just the way the craft arrived at EVE, the next contract, Enter EVE's Atmosphere, would be easily finished by the probe. Still much too scared to send any Kerbals down to the surface without another 3,000 or so hours testing designs in Sandbox, for now, the EVE landing would be a sentient robot, packed with loving memories of friends, family, and birthdays. All just in case I need to discover the effects of stranding something on the surface of hell. In reality, I could have just taken a trip to the British seaside, but I thought this would be easier. Eve Cop decoupled, entered the atmosphere, and somewhat successfully touched down on the surface. Being sentient, it was clearly happy with this, and began jumping for joy, much to my personal dismay, as the craft ended up on its side. Some careful extensions of particular landing legs, the craft was upright, and then flight. This being the first time I've ever built a propeller-based vehicle in this game, I was completely unaware that I'd need to have counter-rotating rotors. As it stands, I have no way to stop Eve Cop spinning like a blender. Help me. Still, the vessel worked as intended, and the contract to enter Eve's atmosphere was done. The next one was going to be painful. Not only did I need to land on the surface of Eve, but I needed to return the vessel back to Kerbin. No Apollo style here, whatever lands on Eve needs to make it back. Mm. I also need to splash down, which normally would make ascent a little tricky. Fortunately, this does not need to be with the same craft, so I returned to Eve Cop and flung it at the closest ocean. It was at this point I started working on a design that could return from the surface. This is something I have never done in Kerbal before. How hard could it be? I kept telling myself. 20 different designs using propellers, in case propellers, propellers on the side, any number of different propeller designs, I realised I did not have the time to faff, and eventually settled on brute forcing the ascent. But more on that later, because now, it's the stupid Minma station. <laughs> By this point, in attempting an EVE landing, I was getting somewhat fed up, but designed that these contracts are stupid one was sent to Minmus. We interrupt the regular scheduling of this EVE episode to bring you Juno. But no landing yet, I need to structure these episodes somehow. The realisation that I'd need R&D at level 3 to unlock the engines needed to brute force my way out of EVE's atmosphere, and the only contracts giving me the sort of funding I'd need to purchase that upgrade being Juno space stations, I set out on making a very nice lasagna. I mean, look at it, it's perfect. Oh, and also, the Juno gateway. Seriously, I think I need help. The names of this episode have been utter shit, and it's only going to get worse. You do not want to know what's coming. I mean, really, you don't. Unlike the name, the rocket looked good. Not wanting to send crew, it was also another AI-driven machine. I asked ChatGPT to get me to Juna, and this is what happened. There's a clickbait title if I ever heard one. The launch successful, Juna Gateway was en route, and just like that, Juna. Not having any Kerbals aboard, this station, in game terms, is a probe. Excellent, I can complete both contracts I picked up with just this one mission. 
Some ways short of the R&D upgrade, I would have to do more station. Lucky for me, the game offered more station. So I designed more station. Only wanting this in orbit of Juna, I didn't need to dock to the existing gateway, but that's no fun. So I docked the two craft together and made slightly bigger station. In the same window, I also sent a relay network that I meticulously spent hours getting all three satellites in the constellation to get a perfect 750 kilometer orbit. Only after did I realize the antenna used were not powerful enough to reach Kerbin. My thoughts after this, I definitely need to get out and touch grass. Still having quite a bit of rocket juice in the tank, I landed the relay transfer stage, because why not? It has no science, so it exists, purely as a monument to my suffering. I know I said no landings this episode, well, I lied. Absolutely no Kerbal landings though, or will they? Unfortunately for you, you're just going to have to watch to the end to find out. After cheesing some contract advances and gaining money from Juna, my overall funds were looking very healthy. And now they're not. But at least I finally have a level 3 R&D building. But unfortunately, no science to unlock any of the good stuff. <laughs> so it's off to Juna again. This time with crew. Sandster, Chadkow, and Bob are the three lucky Kerbals. This may or may not be because I have no other crew left. The new heavy lift vehicle, not named, but for the purpose of this video, I'll call it Philip, gets the three to space, as well as yet another module for the gateway. Very soon, the size of the station will be above average. The crew arrive, and thanks to how broken labs are, I quickly pick up enough science to start unlocking the next line of tech. And with that, the Vector. Oh, and I almost forgot, Juna now has a rover, because who doesn't love a Juna rover? Lacking any sort of skilled pilot, and my main Kerbal, Sandster, being stuck in Juna orbit, I had to recover Erwig from Mint Base 1. See, I told you, I wouldn't forget about them. With enough Delta V left at the end of the mission to move a herring across a rugby pitch, the margins on getting home were quite tight. But now, the moment we've all been waiting for, what everyone wanted to see in this video, the first EVE space station. Oh yeah, and a uh, lander too, because I need to walk on EVE or something like that. Having the unholy power of vector engines on my side, the EVE Ascent new was ready to be launched. It was, however, quite expensive. Putting this in the hands of a relatively inexperienced pilot like Erwig was not my first choice, but it was all I had, and being somewhat new, I didn't really care if he got stuck on the surface of EVE. Oh. Eva sent new is definitely my most stock design so far. You can tell because the fairing is quite large. What? The rocket was capable of getting to orbit. And wanting to make sure I had more than one attempt at getting there, Erwig would be waiting for a while. And just like that, Eve again. The nuclear thermal rockets powering the transfer stage are wonderful, with a specific impulse of 800 seconds in vacuum, meaning they're even more efficient than using space horses, or even getting out and pushing. The main drawback is usually not a problem in space, but lowering my orbit was going to take several passes. Lower, lower, even lower. Okay, too low. I'm now entering the atmosphere. You might think, well, that's the point. This is, after all, an EVE lander. I have to land at some point, but the EVE Ascent new cannot just land anywhere. In order for it to return to space, I needed peak EVE. EVE Cop, before going for a swim, landed in the peaks. So, despite the cloud layer covering the planet, I can't see shit. I had a rough target to aim for. This was something I didn't spend several hours in a sandbox perfecting and causing my Kerbals in that save no end of terror. Eva sent new, pointed the right way, Eve cop location noted, burn started. No turning back for Erwig. The spacecraft made it through the atmosphere, and the course was good. Eve's peaks had been hit, and Erwig was relieved. <sighs> Learning from previous mistakes, the parachutes were deployed, and the heat shields decoupled, thankfully narrowly avoiding hitting the remainder of Eva sent new. Even after losing one on landing, the craft still had more gear than my local on a Saturday night, and was able to come to a rest on the ground. Erwig, on the surface, the entirety of Kerbin was overjoyed. Flag planted. Erwig stretched his legs, being stuck in the Mark 1 capsule for 350 days, and then being subject to gravity that could crush a full tin of Heinz baked beans with pork sausages was not a problem. Clearly, someone had had their Weetabix, and I, whilst writing this, needed to go get breakfast. Okay, the music's off. Time to get deadly serious. Erwig's life may not be at risk, as his capsule will survive re-entry if orbit has failed, but Kerbin is calling. Uh, hello, Erwin. Uh, we've been trying to reach you about your spacecraft's extended warranty. Uh, yeah, sure, we can hold. Nothing would get in the way of this ascent. Taking a deep breath, 
and preparing myself, I staged, and the Eva sent you lifted off the surface. Designing this craft, I went back to my early days of playing KSP and utilized asparagus. Once empty, the first set of tanks were dropped. Then the second set of tanks were dropped. Then the entire craft, the third set of tanks were dropped. And now I had just one vector to power my way to orbit. Still fighting against the tomato soup that is Eve's atmosphere. Seriously, what's with all of the food all of a sudden? The final vector was completely used. It was all up to the terrier. Atmosphere breach, Delta V decreasing. Still some ways off orbit. Delta V rapidly decreasing. Erwig in full panic. Delta V almost gone. With just 17 meters per second left, the spacecraft was back in EVE orbit. Some way off the fuel required to return to Kerbin, the craft was stuck. Or was it? That EVE station mentioned previously, yeah, that was to complete a contract, but also it contained drone. Drone met up with Eva Sent New and transferred all its fuel, giving Eva Strike. Do I really have to do that every time I name the vessel? Erwig spacecraft had the fuel to return home. And just like that, Eve. Big thank you to Pentium, Sunset Awesome, That Unreal Guy, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. Oh